Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. This is probably going to be a pretty confusing video for some of you because the results are really weird. This video today is about the dyno comparison between the AFR 227 competition port heads versus these Promax Project X CNC ported heads. These are my port design. These are 235 cc's and the ASCAS Project X Promax heads as well. And I'm going to show you the dyno graphs and stuff. And trust me when I say this, it's going to bust some of the myths or make them more confusing. Because, um, well, you just wait, better wait till to see the dyno graphs and stuff to, to do the comparisons. But let's just start off with the stuff you want to know what it's about. First off, the engine's a 406 small block Chevy. Scat rotating assembly. It's got Racetech forged pistons. The compression ratio, now that's a little different. It's about 11, 11.0 to 11.4, depending on the heads, because that's going to be an important part to talk about today as well. And the intake manifolds used were several. So you're going to get to see dyno comparisons between different manifolds. Not just one manifold and all three different heads. You're going to get to see multiple ones. The other thing, it had a 1,000 CFM race steam and carburetor up top. It was run on pump gas with a splash of 110 just for safety, although I doubt it needed it. It also has a Urson solid roller camshaft, 260 degrees of duration on intake, 270 on exhaust, 108 lobe separation, 685 lift. Now for the heads. Unfortunately, the AFR 227 head is not here for me to do a uh, show you. It's still bolted and attached to the engine. If you want to see more information about that head, you can go back and watch probably two weeks ago. I flowed that head and tried different locations with the, the radius entry plate and, sh and you could see how that affected flow. So it was definitely flowed and you could see the head it's there it, in that video and some older ones. This one, it's really dirty because this one's also been ran on the uh, dyno as well. This is the Pro Max Project X 235cc head. When I say it's my cylinder head design, because it is. So what Pro Max did is they sent me this head. This is the Project X 215. And they said, go ahead and dyno it. I said, no problem. Dynoed with it. And then they said, why don't you port it? And we're going to make a CNC program for that. So I did. So this is what they got done with after I had done my work. And I'll show you the flow numbers from it too. But you can go back months ago and see what it did to start off with. It's too dark in there. I know it's crappy video for that. So definitely go back and watch the previous videos of this head. And you can see uh, what it looked like without valves and stuff in it before it got all carboned up. But the breakdown for this is it's a 210 intake valve, a 1600 exhaust valve. The intake runner is 235 cc's. Uh, I can't remember what the exhaust is. Now, this is the weird part. And I'm showing you this because this makes a huge difference. These are the chambers, and they're, they look pretty carboned up. And I can't say it's pretty much like, oh, you got some issues going on that's causing this. It takes a lot of idle time for it to get up to temp so we can make a pool because we want to make sure that the water temperatures and oil temperatures are the same um, or really, really close. When we do a pool, it's not the oil temperatures or the water temperatures that are skewing the results. So hence, probably a lot of this carbon is happening during idle time. But anyway, the chambers, whenever I got done doing the model, they were 70 cc's. And you might say, why did you make the chamber so big? Well, the reason for it is when they're as cast like this, they're actually 66 cc's. And for them to have a CNC lines in them, so when you get them, which I don't know how well you can even see any of it, whenever you get them so that you can see the CNC lines, you have to make the port itself bigger or the chamber bigger. Hence, doing that made it 70 cc's. So I asked them, can you mill these down to 64 cc's and I'll run it on the dyno? This way, it'd be about really close to what these are. These are actually 66 cc's, by the way, from the factory. However, before I ever dynoed it, I never cc'd the chambers until today. This is the difference. Promax Project X stock head, 66.2 cc's. I actually cc'd all eight when I did it initially. I just cc'd this. They were supposed to be 64, they are 68 cc's. The AFR 227 that you're going to see compared in this video, those are 65 cc combustion chambers. So what that does is it has your combustion, your compression ratio. If it's with the Project X regular head, the compression ratio was 11.26. So you can round up to 11.3. With the CNC one, 11.02. So it's three tenths lower. 
with the AFR 227, 11.39, or four tenths lower than this, or four tenths higher than this. So this one had, the CNC one of mine, had the least amount of compression ratio. I know it sounds like I'm hedging my bets, but there's a reason for it, and you get to see it. Anyway, now let's just get to the flow numbers, because that's also going to confuse you. I told you this is going to be one of like, I don't understand what just happened. This makes no sense. It doesn't say follow what anybody on the internet keeps saying, and they're telling me this stuff because they're wrong, and they don't test. They're just parroting stuff. But let's start with the flow numbers, and then I'm going to show you the dyno numbers, because that's going to be the more confusing one. Here are the flow numbers, and bear with me as I explain it. My Promax Project X 215 or 235 CNC head, 210 intake valve, same as the AFR is a 210 valve. Difference though, this valve on mine, and I know it's dark and it looks horrible in this video, it's 11 32nd stem, the AFR is an eight millimeter. So even though the outside diameter is the same, the actual stem is smaller on an AFR, which means truthfully, the throat area is actually bigger on the AFRs. However, here's the flow numbers. This is mine. Both were flowed on a 4155 bore on the signs bench. It's a more realistic bench, I think. These are what it's gonna, what the um, CNC had this one right here from Promax with my port design flows. I don't mind saying it. 249 at four, 309 at six, and peaks at 324. These are some other things I was playing with beforehand. These are the true ones. Exhaust side, 180 at four, 234 at peak. And that's without an exhaust pipe. To the AFR, same entry plate. Actually, this one was the better one. It went 257 at four, which is seven CFM better than my head. You might say, why is that though? Couple other things. Besides it having the AFR having the smaller stem valve, the AFR 227 is called a 60-40 spacing head. Man, you can't see nothing with this. What that means is this intake valve on the AFR, it's moved over towards the center, 60 thousandths. The exhaust is moved over towards the wall here, 40 thousandths. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is this intake valve gets moved over, it unshrouds it. So it's going to move more air at the lower RPMs because it's 60 thousandths away from the bore wall here compared to my head, which is a standard valve spacing. So there's a lot of reasons for that. I know I'm hedging my bets, but I'm just telling you. 257, so that's a pretty good gain over mine. And remember, they're smaller. I'm 235, they're 227 cc's. Um, if we look at the uh, next one, 291 at, one, at four, or sorry, five, yeah, it's a lot better than my 285. Six, I'm 308 or 309. Now I've beaten it. There, I'm better at six. I'm better at seven, 316 to a 323. And we're pretty much tied at nine at 324. But lower lifts definitely favor the AFR, and at the higher lifts, slightly edge on this. The exhaust side, um, if you look at it, it's better. We flow almost the same at peak, but at 400 valve lift, 295 versus my 280. I wouldn't worry too much about exhaust, but again, there you go. Also, don't forget, it's still their eight millimeter stem, and I'm 11 30 seconds. Doesn't really matter too much on the exhaust side, but I'm just showing you that. A couple other things to note is even though I'm 235 cc's, where my volume is compared to theirs is not the same. I've got a much bigger bowl than they do, and they've got a much bigger um, push rod pinch. Let me show you what I mean on that. Let me tilt this head again. Oh, I'm just going to drop it open. This is the push rod pinch, which you can hardly see. I know it's dark, and I'm sorry for a crappy video. Uh, because when you move a valve over, so if I move this intake valve over 60 thousandths, the rocker set itself gets moved over 60 thousandths, which means that push rod slot gets moved over. So actually, even though uh, I'm a bigger volume, the AFR 227, because everything's moved over this way, it actually has more cross-sectional area at the pinch than I do, than this 235. So need to know that. So bigger, yes, I've got more volume at the end because of my speed coming through the pinch is so fast, got to slow it to make the turn over the short side. But you get the idea in that they flow close to the same. Not at 400, but flow really close to the same. They're relatively close to being the same design. Chamber's close to the same design. Mine, of course, is a little bit bigger. One other thing about this is whenever my heads were milled to get them to the 68 cc's, it dropped this whole thing down, which means every intake, and you can go back and watch that video. That's a cool one, too. Every intake that was bolted on these set um, lower here, like it was... Or, 
I have it wrong, it sit higher. The intake port would be higher here. It wasn't until we milled off the side of a trick flow R intake, the intake face, it fit perfect with that. And then it made a huge difference, like nine horsepower. Now, let's get to the dyno results because your mind's about to be blown away. time seeing these uh, graphs that I'm showing you that have all the horsepower and stuff on my website or on my online store which I'm gonna put a link in the description I have these they're gonna be available in like a book like this see how it all printed all the dyno sheets and everything and these comparison graphs will be in there as also with the flow sheets that you just saw and a whole bunch of other stuff that was anything related to the testing will be in that book if you would have rather have it in your hand and easier to flip back and forth to see Go to my store, pre-order the book. In April, I'm, I'm printing them. I'm only going to print like 10 more than what the orders are, and that's it. Speaking of which, some of the books I have from previous tests are on sale that you'll probably see me use here in this video just because it uh, has to do with the Project X head. I'm marking those down just because I need clear space. Now, to the numbers. The red line, although it's starting to go purple up here because he's run out of ink, is the AFR-227 competition port. This black line is the stock Promax Project X head. That's actually this one. And then this blue-green line is the this head, the 235cc head. This intake, though, this is where things can get weird, remember? Um, this is with the Victor Jr., the old one that's been port-matched. It was the best intake used whenever it was used on the AFR Enforcers. It was not the best on the Project X and every head, after, or every head that's been used after that but it's still a very good manifold. Now, you've probably heard uh, smaller cross-sectional, uh, smaller CC port makes more torque down low. You've heard that, right? I've heard it too, a lot. People tell me that and I'm like, are you sure? See that red line? This is below 5,000, I'm not even into the lower range. Mm, is it? That's the smallest port. Well, actually the 215 is the smallest port. That 227 is smaller than my 235. If you look, these are the difference. That 235 is right there. That's a 215 right there. So at 4,000 RPM, which one has more torque? The bigger port. How about here? This is the red line. This is the AFR-227. Which one has more torque? Uh, the 215 and 235 are tying up here, and the 227 is down here. So that's, that's not entirely true when people say that. They don't, they're just generalizing. They're not testing. They're generalizing. They're definitely not doing any testing. But don't worry. I got more. Now, if we would track the lines through at the very top, this is where things get interesting. This black line is the Promax Project X. That red line right there is the AFR, and this blue line is mine, the Project X 235. Now, you would think, oh, you've got to brag about your heads. Give me a second. Not really. This one thing that I did have to do on both of the, these heads, the carburetor was exactly the same. I didn't have to jet it up or nothing. On the AFR, the very first test, it would have been below the Project X head. I actually had to jet it up to get the same air, air fuel ratios that those two were running. It did result in more power, and that's what you see here. So what I'm trying to say is, yeah, I actually had to add more jet for the AFR 227 than I didn't on the others. So even doing that, it did bump it up to here, but the Promax Project X 235 CC beat it. But you're like, oh, you should be, that's why you're doing this. You're just trying to sell something. Be patient now. Let's go to a different intake manifold because this is the thing that's gonna confuse you. That's one intake manifold. It isn't the only one. Let's go to this one. This intake that was used is the Elderbrock 2970. I'm gonna stop the video right now to show you. This is the manifold that was used. This is the Elderbrock 2970. Somewhere around here is a part number, but whatever. It's a dominator flange when, as you can tell, I did modify it. Uh, some people call this a port job, but not really. 
All I did was cut off the clover leaf. There's actually a clover leaf in here. And you might say, well, what did you do before and after testing? I did. You should buy one of the previous books. You can see how much it was worth. I'll go ahead and give you a hint. Very little. Also, I rounded the edges here just to smooth them up to see if that did anything. Also worth very little. However, the intake works pretty good. Now, you might say, is it port matched? Absolutely not. It's stock. Never been port matched. Fits, uh, it's not port matched to that heads, those heads, any of the heads. They're just the way it is from the factory. So, doesn't look pretty, but it does a pretty good job. So now let's look at the numbers. Back to the numbers. So that's the intake that was used. Again, three different heads it was on. Stock Promax Project X 215s, the CNC 235s, and the AFR 227s. Purple lines, AFR 227s, the black lines, the Promax, and the blue line, kinda, is the 235 of mine. Something that is different, I will say this that they're not entirely the same. The AFR 227 and the Project X both had a two inch Procomp tapered spacer. Um, sorry, the black lines, the 235. So these two have the same spacer on this one. I forgot I used the one inch hamburger spacer. I never used the two inch to comparison with it. Do I think it was worth that much more over the one inch or over the two inch Procomp? No, but it was a mistake on my part. Otherwise you'd have an exactly um, comparison. But this is close enough. Here we go. Uh, straight up, the AFR kicks the crap out of everything. So it actually has. So if you were like, well, see, low speed, you know, the smaller the port, the more torque you make down low. On this manifold, you are correct. Because on this one, that is true. The AFR was better every single spot over the, over the 215 and my 235. Oddly enough, though, the 215 never made uh, more torque or horsepower than my 235. How much were the differences? Now you saw with the Victor Jr. the differences were pretty small. You might be like, we well, never said it how much they were. It was like four. This ended up being quite a bit more. The AFR 640, the 235, 630. So that's a 10 horsepower difference. The Project X 616. So that was worth, uh, looks like 10 horsepower and over stock, mine was worth 14. So yeah. And on the torque side, I don't, these are 547, that's 556, that's a gain of nine. So yeah, it was up, definitely up. Interesting thing altogether. So now there's a couple things that could play a part of this. You gotta remember, I talked about it. Some of the things that may have closed this gap was remember the AFR actually has the highest compression ratio at 11.4. Mine's 11.04. .04. So this is almost four tenths of a compression ratio more. And this one's 11.3, so it's actually closer to the AFR. The other thing, and this one's big, it's the port alignment. Whenever this got milled off so that the uh, chambers could get smaller, otherwise they'd be really big, the intake never fit the same. So it, and I'm being straight up honest with you, and it sounds like I'm hedging my bets and I'm just so proud of mine, I'm trying to make justifications, but I'm being serious. When the AFR 227 was put on the engine, all the manifolds lined up really, really good with the AFR 227, comparing them to these. Most of the manifolds themselves were either wider or narrower than, the, than this, and most of them for sure on this one were shifted way up. On this one, they actually said okay, but they, again, they're wider. So the best fit was the AFR 227. And I actually shouldn't say this was wider. These ones are wide anyway, so none of the manifolds were doing that, but definitely was shifted up, which is a bad deal. It's definitely worth some power. So that and compression, maybe it'd been the same, but I'm, I just wanna be up front. But the winner for this one, AFR 227. But that wasn't the only manifold tested. Let's go to another one. Now, unfortunately, this one I only got to test on two different heads. This was the Elderbrock street ram so this is the tunnel ram that street ram was never tested on the 235 cc head so i don't have that head here to compare it to so unfortunately i can't give you that comparison which is i know weird so instead what you're doing is you have the afr 227 versus the stock 215 pro max this one's going to shock you the pink line is the 227 the black lines, the stock Project X. And as you could tell, the black line's in the lead, which means the stock Pro Max Project X, except for at the very start, which again, 
This goes against what people say when they're like, larger port makes more um, torque down low, does it? But anyway, again, the smaller port does actually make more torque in the middle. And then it actually doesn't make more peak power because if you look about 6600, that's where the AFR is better. And it's only, it's about 10. But for the most of the run, so from here, we'll be like 44 to 63, the stock Pro Max Project X is better. Not at peak. Something else to think about, huh? Now, you know, I'm not done. I got another intake. These are some raw numbers, which I know you're never gonna, this is the Victor Jr. actually blended. I don't know why I'm showing you this besides you can see the numbers. Uh, this is the one I wanted to show you. The dual plane, the AFR 4812 dual plane, which you saw me test with the Dominator. This was with the uh, 4150 carburetor. And what I wanted to show you was, I also tested the same configuration on the stock Pro Max Project X 215s. I didn't get a chance to test it on the 235s. Sorry about that. However, this is gonna blow your mind too. No comparison graph, I'm sorry. Both are using the same carburetor, same spacer, exactly the same. This is the 227, yep, right there. And this is the stock 215. Where do you have your mind blown? If you look at the numbers, I'm gonna go through, this is the 227, remember, and this is the 215. The 227 is better, and by the way, it started at 4,200, so I have to go to here. 501 to 512. Yep, bigger port makes more torque than the smaller port at the same RPM. Uh, 4,300, it is 508, so it's still making more. I'm gonna go ahead and save you the drama. It's not until 4,500, which it'd be 5, 8, 516 on the AFR 227 versus 5819, 525 at 4600 from the stock ones. Yeah, there, it's beating it. I don't have the comparison graph, so I'll go ahead and tell you. From 42 to 4500, the AFR 227 is better than the 215. So, bigger port made more torque down low than the stock, not even mine, stock 215s. Here's where it gets weird. The 215 made more power from that point on, so from 4,500, so this bigger head made more torque down low. From 4,500 on to 7,000, the smaller head made more power. Look, 601 at a peak at 66. We go to 66 here, 591. It's up by almost 10. This head only flows 290, this one flows 327, that's 30 CFM more, bigger volume. It should have made more power at the peak RPMs. Nope, lesser flowing, smaller head made more. When I tell you this, the this is gonna confuse you, it does. Now at 7,000, it's making 581 with the 215 versus 580.5, so it's are close, but for the, most of the part, that's right. The smaller head makes more horsepower at the higher RPM. There's a reason why I test a whole bunch of stuff. And a lot of you are like, well, I don't know why you're testing it. People have tested that before. There's a, sometimes there's agendas that go with stuff. And sometimes I just want to see if they're right. This, I have no idea why it did what it did. Is the AFR 227 head good? Yes. Can it be beat by other heads? Evidently. Depends on what manifold you're in. Because if you're racing and you put that manifold on, looking at the graph, that, the AFR 227 with that manifold is kicking the crap out of the other stuff I have. You put a dual plane on, I know some of you do it. The 215 is beating it. I don't know about the 235, I never tested that one. But then you put a Victor Jr. on, this one's beating all the rest. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to test the other things. There's one other intake I still wish I want to test, and when I go back, I may. The Trick Flow R was the one I tested on this one after I got it milled down, and it became the best 4150 manifold tested with these heads um, after it was milled. I want to put that intake on the AFR 227. My fear is the port alignment is going to be horrible, and it's going to skew the AFR 227 to make it look worse. Maybe. I mean, 
But then again, all the manifolds didn't fit very good on this one, except for one, the trick flow. So I don't know. Still made, has less compression too. Anyway, I know it's a longer video and it feels like I'm ranting. It's because I don't understand why some of this stuff happens, but I keep testing, hoping I can figure more stuff out. I tell at the end of every video, I am no Superman because this stuff, it will punch you in the face when you think you know it all. I can promise you that. And for the people that think that they know it all, and they're the one, first ones to comment on a Facebook post or on a forum and stuff, they're just repeating stuff a lot of the times. Once you test, things like this just happen. You're like, man, that's weird. And I know you're like, well, you should have made everyone the same compression ratio. Uh, yeah, I should have. That'd be much harder to do because it opens up a lot of things. I have to say, I actually thought these would be 64 and there weren't. I'm glad I CC'd it to confirm. But that also made the intake not fit with it. Uh, but man, that was really, really close. I think in all reality, this is probably closer to what most of you do. You've got a nice running combination. Maybe you got your 215s you got here and you got them for steel, right? Because they're a lot cheaper than the FR 227s. They're a lot cheaper even than my CNC ones. So you're running those and you're like, man, I'm gonna step up my game. So next year I'm gonna save up my pennies, got my tax return, we got, you know, I'm gonna get me some money, I'm gonna get these CNC heads and you get these CNC heads on. Maybe you're still running the Victor Jr. because you saved all your money to get the nicer uh, CNC heads, but you didn't have enough money to get a nicer intake. Crap, you only gain like four horsepower. It doesn't feel like you gain much, much at all. See how there's so many variables? It's just, it's why I test. That's truly why I test. Please buy some more books so I can test some more stuff and prove some more things weird or wrong or that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, this is the first time I really had a chance to sit down and look at the numbers because I, I knew that this, the, the 235s when we first fired up on the dyno, probably more than you want to know. Uh, when the AFR 227s were on, I was like, man, this thing ain't making the same power as the 235s. It's not even, it was down like almost 10. I was like, that sucks. I actually thought... I really thought the 227 would make more, and I really wanted it to make more because I want the engine to make more power, even if it doesn't have my heads on it. Eventually, it's going to have some different heads. I'm sure it'll make even more. But then adding jet, it almost it got close, but it wasn't there. It wasn't until that intake got on, I was like, wow, 227s are running pretty good. And I had all thoughts that that 227 was going to beat it anyway because it had the better valve spacing. It flowed more air down low. Yeah. That's why we test. Anyway, longer video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Sorry the head's not clean enough to show more of it, but you really can go back and watch previous videos that, where I was like brand new. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I do not port cast iron heads. I am definitely no Superman. You guys take care.